Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Well, good evening and welcome to our service tonight. And uh, the first of August, where is the year gone? So fast. And for us, it's even faster because our liturgical year ends in basically towards the end of um, uh, November, which means that for us, we've only got about three months before we start a new year. So as we come to this time, we come now to look at the abundance. The Lord is near to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of all that fear him. He is their cry and saves them. Let us begin by bringing our hearts and our minds to God in prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we come and bring our hearts in joy through the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the comic prayer for this service. <coughs> o God, with whom we wrestle until the break of day, make us long to seek your face, beyond the limits of our strength, that in our wounds we may remember you, and in your blessing we may find ourselves through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for readings. First reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 32, beginning at verse 22. The same night, he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket. And Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask me my name? 
and there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him, and as he passed Penuel, Peniel, limping because of his hip. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 100, uh, it's Psalm 17. Thanks be to God. 
the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew, chapter 14, beginning at the 13th verse. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. When the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowd away so that they may go into the village and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, We have, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowd and crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled and they took up what was left over all the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men besides women and children. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. May the words of my lips and meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, Lord our God and Redeemer. Amen. You know, at times reading start <coughs> in the middle of a story and it starts with a point where you don't know what it was that they're talking about, but it's assumed you do. The gospel's a bit like that. And now when Jesus heard this, I don't know if it arose in you to say, what did he hear? This particular piece of scripture comes after the arrest and death of John the Baptist. So the thing that Jesus had been told was that John the Baptist was dead. And Jesus went away. I think this is an important part of the reading because there's a, a need, Jesus wants time alone. We believe that John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. And so therefore there's a sense of his grief and his relative. He was a he was a prophet to the people. So therefore he is grieving the loss of a strong spiritual leader. And so he wants to go away and be alone. I think we can all understand that. And I think it's a good, important point of the, what's going up, which is when he gets out of his boat, the people, not knowing why he went away, but knowing he's gone, chase him. Now, when he gets out of the boat, he does not just go, look, I'm, I want to be alone. Is that right? Can you just go home and leave me alone for a while? It's not time to grieve. I want to be by my thoughts and my feelings. No, he sees this mass of people who have chased him and he has compassion on them. So his compassion for those who are there suffering is greater than the grief he feels for John's death. He goes and heals them, gives them anything they want. And then night comes and we've seen him get, it says he heals them. So he's been doing all the spiritual healing and then the disciples say it's getting late, they need physical nourishment. Send them away to get this physical nourishment. And Jesus says, you don't need to. You give them food. And out of this, Jesus provides us now. now I'm always wanting to try and be broad in my thoughts about the Bible. So I'm always open to hear what people's interpretations are. So I want to share an interpretation. 
a friend of mine and an old clergy, for them in this reading, they believe that as Jesus gave the bread and fish that he had, although the disciples that he gave to them, people were moved and they had food and they shared their food. So what was picked up wasn't necessarily out of the original loaves and fish, but what was left over after everybody shared what they had. Now, it diminishes the miracle a bit. For people who struggle with the miracle, it's a very good way of being able to come to terms with this idea of taking two loaves and five fish and suddenly feeding 5,000 people. That's not possible, but if everybody was moved to share their food, then maybe that was right. I don't want to say one is more right than another, because really at the end of the day, this is about our journeys, and our journeys are a combination of our faith and our thoughts. One thing they say about us Anglicans is we live by the three stools, and that is uh, prayer, reading, and thought. And so thinking is a very big part of our expectation as Anglicans to be thinkers of the gospel, not just blind acceptors. So I think it's part of a person's journey in their faith. If at their time in faith, the miracle of Jesus feeling feeding 5,000 with five loaves and two fish is hard for them to grasp and the other belief interpretation uh, helps them and works for them, I'm okay with that. And hope that maybe one day they may get to a point where they believe the miracle. Maybe one day I won't look so nuts for them because I do believe it. What was common though in there is not just the miracle. One of the things that this parable is about, this story is about, is the fact that Jesus gave without, without care. He gave of his gifts and talents without care. He gave of the food without care. He put what he saw as the need before his own. And there was abundance. The idea of the leftovers that are picked up are to tell us that not only was there enough to feed the people who were there, there was more than enough. Yet they worried about being able to feed these 5,000 people. That's what the story of this reading is about, that there is always abundance. Now, Paul, in his letter to the Romans, he's in a bit of distress. Firstly, he wants the Romans to know that everything he's been telling them, which was a bit hard to understand, I believe, and also a bit wild, he says, it's true, I'm not lying to you, believe me. But then he goes on to this thing that he's in pain. He would like to be accursed. He would be willing to give up his relationship with God for his fellow brothers and sisters of the flesh, the Israelites. What draws him to make this declaration to the Romans? Well, see, there was a sense at which the Israelites had lost their relationship with God through Christ. Because they had depended on their physical, biological connection to Abraham to be their justification for being blessed by God. And for Paul, this is a great grievous point because he knows that there are Israelites who are so caught up in their biological connection that they are not open to hearing the story of Jesus, to his gift, to receive it. And he mourns that loss. I think it really is important for us to understand how important to Paul his Jewishness, being an Israelite, was to him as a live a life. That he they were going to lose their relationship with God and their place in his kingdom grieved him greatly. That he was even willing to lose his own faith if they would gain it. In this, he goes on to explain to the Romans that. It is not a biological connection that made people the descendants of Abraham. God did not pick Abraham because he was biologically connected to anybody. 
He picked Abraham because Abraham had a faith. A faith that would follow God wherever God led him. The descendants of Abraham are anybody who has a faith like Abraham. A willingness to follow God wherever God leads. We count ourselves as descendants of Abraham not because we are a Jewish, not because we are biologically connected to Abraham, but because we accept the promise that God made to Abraham and to us through Christ and we are willing to live by what we're asked to do. Now, Abraham was asked to go and blindly to a new country, and for doing that, he would receive land, a great nation, and the world would be blessed through him. And I said earlier in the year that we, through our acceptance of Christ's sacrifice, have accepted that through this, we get forgiveness of sins, salvation, and we are welcomed into the kingdom of God. And the world is blessed through us. And that's important too. The world is blessed through us. But for us to receive Jesus' promises, just as Abraham received God's promises, we have to be faithful and obedient even though we can't be 100% sure of what we're getting. So we have to be faithful to the fact that we're forgiven our sins, we are given salvation, and that there is a heaven and we will be welcomed into it. And that we will bless the world, which is what the Israelites were supposed to do, bless the world through their relationship with God, which they had lost sight of. They actually kept their faith to themselves and were not very open to letting other people in. So what do we learn from this? Firstly, there's abundance. God has no limit. God wasn't limiting his faith to the Israelites. The faith that God gave to Abraham, he gave and promised to the world. It was not just limited to a small crowd. Anyone can have it, but not everybody wants it. There is abundance. God's love is overflowing. However, we can become like the Israelites. We can be afraid that there's not enough. We've got to hoard it. It's mine. I don't give it to anybody else. Even worse, nobody wants what I've got, so I'm not going to share it because why would I share something that nobody else wants? If I was to use an example for that, I would probably put a uh, pumpkin. You know, nobody wants a pumpkin. If I had a pumpkin, no one would share it with anybody because I don't think anybody would want it. And I'd be wrong because there are people out there who love it. The problem is, if I'm willing to put the time out to find it. Another thing that's important is the abundance is not something we go out and hope to find. The abundance is something we're supposed to feel in our hearts. The abundance pours out of us to others. I went to RI on Friday and I was talking to the children about what I believe heaven is. We were, you know, the books assume that kids already know what heaven is. You know what kids think heaven is? place you go to when you die. You ask them, well, what's that going to be like? Well, I don't know, I just know you go there when you die. So I had to try and help them understand that it wasn't just about where you went. It was, and we believe that it actually can be here on earth as well. But I told them it's peace and love. And you know what I said? Because I believe heaven is peace and love, and because I believe that I can have it here, and I get it through God, I try to find God's peace and love in my life. And then I give that to other people. So when I come to you every Friday, it's not just the stories I bring, it's the peace and love that I want to bring to you. When we go and live our lives, we are not just Christians. 
We are givers of the abundance. What is flowing out of our hearts? And if God's love is not flowing out of our hearts, the question is, why not? Why do we not feel loved by God? Why does our God's love for us not make us feel joyful in our faith? Because if God is only up here, then all I'm going to give them is knowledge. But God is flowing out of my heart, not just a quiet secret I keep to me, a small flame that I'm hoping might grow one day or hope nobody snuffs out. Then it's useless, not just to other people, it's useless to others as well. Where do I see God's love for me? That's the question we ask ourselves. Where do I see God's love for me? How do I know God loves me? How do I take that thought and make it a reality that flows out of my heart? God's love is abundant. God loves us all. But do we believe it? Do we feel it? And do we give it to others? Amen. We come to reaffirm as a community who this God that loves us, what it is and why we love Him, why He loves us. Let us affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us now pray for the world, the church, and for our souls. The response to the prayers this week is loving God in your mercy. And the response is hear our prayer. Loving and merciful God, you are steadfast in your love for your people, and you answer us when we call on you. Hear us now as we bring our prayers for your world. We pray for all your people whose lives are threatened by war, terrorism, or disaster, by famine, or disease, 
for leaders of nations, those who govern, those who dispense justice. Lord, we, we pray especially at the moment for all the concerns that are on our hearts at the moment as the COVID-19 has re-entered into Queensland. Fears that have now been rekindled. The steps and measures that will be need to be taken. Lord, help us not to let the fears overcome us. Help it not to take over our time and our lives. Long ago you fed a multitude. Take our small gifts and use them today to feed those who hunger for justice and peace. Loving God, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Loving and merciful God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you bless us and name us anew, making us children of your promise. Hear us now as we bring our church prayers for your church. We pray for all who are fed at your table, for pastors and teachers, and for all who provide spiritual nourishment to your people. We bring the prayer for our parish. Renew in us, O oh God, the zeal for your love. Let our parish come alive with the power of your spirit. Where we have failed, forgive us. Where we have persevered, encourage us. Where we are in doubt, direct us. Help us to see new opportunities for witness and service for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord and Saviour. Long ago you fed a multitude. Take our small gifts and use them today to feed those who hunger to hear your gospel. Loving God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving and merciful God, your Son Jesus Christ gathered around him a group of disciples and friends. Hear us now as we bring our prayers for those close and dear to us. We pray for all who live in this city and those whose daily work enrich this community. For members of this parish, for our families, friends, and for ourselves. Long ago you fed a multitude, take our small gifts and use them today to feed those who hunger for acceptance and love. Loving God in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Loving and merciful God, your Son Jesus Christ healed the sick and fed the hungry. Hear us now as we bring our prayers for those in need. We pray for all who have no work, no home. No hope for the future. <clears throat> for the sad and the lonely. For the sick and all who care for them. We bring to you today those of our friends and family who are suffering. Been special prayers for Anne Howe, 
Baby Oden, Peter Tranter, Jill Daniels, Brett, Bill Henderson, Damien Bale, Patricia McMullen, Kenneth Thordeman, Wendy Lindsay, Oliver, and Linda. Long ago, you fed a multitude. Take our small gifts and use them today to feed those who hunger for comfort and hope. Loving God, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Loving and merciful God, those who see your face shall be satisfied. Hear us now as we remember those who have passed through death to eternal life. We remember the faithful people of this parish and all whom you have, we have loved. We remember Mary Hemmen, Michelle Doherty, Edna Grady, Jean, Jenny, Jeannie Sluice, Irene Robertson, Douglas Aland, Eva Parker, Emma, Emily Fraser and Adrian Fernando. Help us to follow in the steps of all who have offered their lives to you, that our small gift may be turned to abundance in your hands and used to feed your hungry people. Bring us from death to life, that with all your saints we may come to see your, your, you face to face and rest in your eternal presence. Loving God in your mercy, hear yeah. yeah, our prayer. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Let us prepare for our confession through the prayer of humble access. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs from under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose name is always Run us, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may have a more well in him and be in us. Amen. God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to the Lord's table. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in the newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins. Strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Please be able to stand for the greeting of peace. Our faith and our relationship unites us as we share the love that we share with others. We are the body of Christ. Yes, the, of us. the peace and love of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Lift up your hearts. We we to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours, always and everywhere. Mighty Creator, ever living God, we give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ who, by the power of your Spirit, was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may sit, kneel or stand, depending on what your worship requires. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, that we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. 
And when he'd given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. And again, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. We worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. As this broken bread was once many grains, which have, been, which have been gathered together and made one bread, so may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, Grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, keep me eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ, keep me eternal life. Amen. Body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Oh, may God be with you and Jesus guide you. The Spirit fill you with his love that we may pour out of you. Jesus now and forever. Amen. Body of Christ keep you in a
percent a lot. A lot of cost to keep you in the ten a lot. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that in this sacrament you assure us of your goodness and love. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and help us to grow in love and obedience that we may serve you in this world and finally be brought to that table where all your saints feast with you forever. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. Before I say the blessing, I want to thank you all for being here and for those who will be watching the service. I hope that you've been able to at least think about the love and maybe experience some of that love during the service. If you go out more open, to see the world through God's love, not necessarily through what it deserves, but what God feels for it. Be just then for the blessing. The peace of God which transcends all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Bless of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and His Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace and joy to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.